going to show you how to do German short row. And what short rows are, are exactly short rows. You don't knit all of the stitches on the row or the round. You literally knit over to the stitches that you are told to knit to. And then you turn your fabric and you knit or purl back to where you're told to go. So you effectively are working a smaller section of stitches and thus you end up shaping your fabric because you're not working those outside stitches. So I'm going to show you how we do that. I'm going to knit over to where your pattern would say, maybe work to five stitches or four stitches before a marker or before an end of a row, a row or a round. And then what happens is you end up turning your fabric and doing your short row. So here we are working over to say four stitches before the end of the row is five, four, okay. So what will effectively happen is they're to you're, you're told to turn your work. So you knit four stitches or whatever the pattern calls. You turn your work over. And now with a short row or to make what they call it a, I guess effectively a double stitch, you need your working yarn to the front of your fabric. Now here when we're on the purl side, it naturally is hanging there. So what we want to do is with our white needle, we want to slip this first stitch on the left needle purl wise. So we're just lifting that over there. And then we're going to take our working yarn and we're going to lift and pull up super tight so that we effectively are creating this double stitch, but it's literally the stitch, the previous stitch worked and we're just lifting it up over the needle. And we're going to wrap our yarn around because we want to continue purling. And then we purl across. I normally do the first couple of stitches after a, um, a like a, a, a double stitch, a little tighter. So we work across and purl across, say, to the last four stitches, or as I say, what the pattern calls for. And we work over. And then with working a double stitch. So you've worked over to the last four stitches of where you want to go. So now you want to turn your work. So we're going to turn our work and our working yarn is to the back. And what we want to do though is bring that working yarn to the front. We always need our working yarn to the front. So bring it between the needles and then we're going to slip again that first stitch purl wise. We're going to take our working yarn and we're going to lift again that stitch. We're going to lift it over so creating these two double legs or these two legs of this stitch. And then we're going to knit and pull that kind of tight enough and then we're going to work across again. And so effectively you've created a short row because you've only knit, you know, a certain amount of stitches on the row instead of the entire row. So I'm going to work across, say your pattern calls for, you know, keep working to the two stitches before the last double stitch. So there's where we have our double stitch yanked over our needle. And then there's a couple of stitches beforehand. So if we need to do a turn again, so I'll show you how you do it again. So we turn our work around. Our working yarn is to the front, which is very important. Then we're going to slip that first stitch. And then we're going to lift up the working yarn and lift that, lift that stitch over, which creates our two legs. I'm going to bring the yarn around because we're on a purl row between the needles. And then we're going to work our way back to say two stitches before our last DS on this purl side row. So we have how many more to go? So there's our there's our lifted stitch or our double stitch. So again, we need to turn our work because we're going to be lifting this stitch. We need to bring our working yarn again between the needles to the front of the work. And then we're going to slip this stitch purl wise we're going to pull it up tight to create those two legs lifted over the needle and then we're going to knit 
across. Now, what happens here is if we can see it, you have effectively kind of created a slope. You've got these extra fabric in here in this middle section. These stitches were not knit on the outside, so you're, you're effectively creating this slope with your fabric on both sides. Now, when it comes to resolving those double stitch stitches, so when you're told to knit across them, we effectively, there's your double stitch, it's been yanked up over the needle. You knit them, both legs together. So you literally put the needle in, knit both legs together, and then continue on until you come across the next one, and you're going to knit both of those legs together again. And on the purl side, you will purl both of those legs together. And I'll show you that now. So that's effectively, at the end of that, and we work across, so our pearl DSs are over on this side. So we're gonna work across our yarn in purling. And we will reach the end. I know, I'm not the fastest knitter in the world. So here we are coming up to a, um, a pearl DS. Here we go. So it's not this guy, the next one. So you can see we have the two stitches here. So again, don't individually purl them. Purl the two legs together and continue to the next stitch. And purl the two legs together with this guy again. You can see them there. And that is effectively short rowing. So I'll show you what the fabric looks like now when I turn it around. So you have basically, is, is you can see this kind of a, almost like a slight pucker, which is why sometimes this is also used in the heel of socks. It's a perfect way for creating that heel on the foot of a sock. Um, because you're not knitting all the stitches in this light little pucker. But when if I was to take it off the needle, actually, I'll just do that now, you can see where we actually have a slight slope up on this side and a slight slope up on this side and the extra stitches that were worked in the center for our short row. And that is how I do my German short rows. Now, I hope you have fun doing that. Thank you.